In this short little video, we're going to explore alkoxy groups. Alkoxy groups are very useful when we're dealing with ethers or reactions that involve ethers. So in this case, let's just sketch up a few of these groups. First, I'm going to draw methyl. And then I'm going to draw ethyl. I'm going to draw and propyl. When am I drawing it like this? You'll see in just a second, one, two, three. Then I'm gonna draw isopropyl. And I'm also gonna draw the butyls, so that's a little bit more clear. So we have n-butyl, we're gonna have sec-butyl, we're gonna have tert-butyl, and we're gonna have isobutyl. So these are our basic shapes. Remember here, we're attaching to the carbon chain. But in this case, we're gonna remove from the alkyl group, we're gonna remove the alkyl ending and they're gonna turn into alkoxy groups when we add the OXY. So in this case, when the oxygen interrupts the chain and then we have a bonding arm, we're gonna have different groups which are basically the derivatives with an oxygen in the middle, which is interrupting the attachment to the main chain. Remember, these groups are substituents, so they have to be named using alphabetical order when we're naming others. So in this case, methyl turned into, and I'm drawing um, skeletal formulas, that's why they look this way. So here we have methoxy. This would be ethyl with the oxy in the middle. Substitute the L for oxy, ethoxy. This is n-propyl, but since we have the oxygen in the middle, n-propoxy. Here we have isopropyl with the oxygen in the middle, isopropyl, but not pill, propoxy. So we're just basically, in all of these exercises, we're switching the L for the oxy group, right? In this case, we have N-butoxy, sec-butoxy, and then we have white, tert-butoxy, and last but not least, isobutoxy. And these would all continue to pentyl, hexyl, pentoxy, hexoxy, all those different nomenclatures. Why is this important? Because like you saw in the other video where we're naming others, alkoxy groups are shown up as, uh, show up as substituents where we're naming others. Just a quick example in this draft would be, I'm gonna draw an ether, and this ether might be here. We're gonna draw this, then we we'll draw this one, and we're gonna make this pretty twisty. And then in this example, we're gonna draw this one. So if we're going to do UPOC, which is black, I find my longest chain and my longest chain is going to be one, two, three. No, that's not it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to start coloring this chain, which is seven, right? And then we number it so we don't make any mistakes, giving the substituents the lowest numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So my main chain or the orange part is gonna be called heptane because it's just single bonding carbons. And again, we're naming others here, heptane. And what is attached at number two? We have isopropyl, but it's interrupted by this oxygen group. So it's effectively gonna be called what? It's going to be isopropoxy. So I highlight all of this thing. And at number two, we have isopropoxy. Isopropoxy. Now, in the case that we're doing common nomenclature, remember, we have to identify what's on the left and on the uh, right side of the other, of the oxygen atom. So here we have isopropyl. And on the other side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attached to the secondary carbon, sec heptyl. So using purely alphabetical order, heptyl comes before propyl. So this is going to be sec heptyl. 
isopropyl and this oxygen atom turns into ether ether and this is a practical example now one last thing in this video that we're gonna see is just um, some salts made with with these alkoxy groups so we're gonna call them sodium alkoxides alkoxides which if you notice is the same thing we have alkyl and we have alkoxy and then we have alkoxide so it's gonna follow the same naming structure and this is a thing we have sodium atom attached to the oxygen atom to a carbon branch sodium atom oxygen atom a longer branch sodium atom oxygen atom longer branch and one last example which i hope you can apply and you can get so in this case the naming style is going to be what this is the alkoxy group it's methoxy but methoxy is going to turn into methoxide so the name of this whole thing is going to be sodium methoxide then the name of this one sodium attached to an ethoxy group sodium ethoxide now here we start getting shapes again both of these are sodium sodium here we have our sodium atom and this is n-propyl and propoxy and propoxide and propoxide and in the last example sodium isopropyl isopropoxy isopropoxide this is going to be very useful when you're studying reactions with others.